Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the video, and today we're going to be checking out the Runcam Split Mini. Now this is sort of their mini, uh, they call it a mini, but it actually is sort of a micro form factor. If we take a look at a standard micro camera, you see it is a little bit bigger than, um, than the micro in terms of overall size, but the um, side mounting is the same, so I would consider this a micro camera there. And now this is like the popular Split V2 that I have in here. We have the full-size camera and then the board to run your FPV video as well as an HD 1080p 60 um, frames per second recording. But now they've shrunken it down into the mini-size camera and 20 by 20 boards. This one does require two boards instead of one single board. You can see they have the two boards that stack together with this sort of pin layout right there. Just give you an up-close look at the board. They are still using this ribbon cable. And if we take a look at what else we get in the box, we just have, looks like, some um, cables to help power it and wire everything up. We have a little um, camera mount if you want to use that, little metal guy. Have some plugs, a few little metal pieces. These probably um, screw over to protect the SD card from ejecting. which is underneath this sticker. There you can see there is the microphone and then the micro SD card as well as the USB slot. But I'm gonna put this back on so I can remember what these outputs are. And then in this bag we have, it looks, it looks like some metal M2 hardware with some brass spacers, um, those little gold things. I'm not exactly sure if they are meant to carry power through the corners of this board. Because um, I know like the TBS Power Cube does something like that, but since it uses the pins together I don't think it's doing that. So let me get this guy installed in a quad and we'll see how it performs. In case you're wondering the split mini with just the boards and the camera, I know the standoffs weighs about 15.38 grams. Alright, here we are with some of the DVR recording from the mini split and we just start off right away. You can see there is quite a bit of noise in the video and I just wired this guy directly off of VBAT so that's probably why because I didn't have any 5 volt regulators on this quad that were strong enough to take it. The noise it isn't unflyable, it didn't really impair my flying but it's definitely a lot more than uh, most people will be willing to accept and I did have a 330 microfarad cap on here but in general there's just a lot of noise if you're powering it off of VBAT. And then if we just switch over to the HD recording here, hopefully you can see that the color rendition is actually pretty decent um, stock. This is completely stock footage here. Um, the color, it's a little bit on the cold side, but just barely. I think it's a really nice stock image, and I didn't mess with any of the settings. It's just in 1080-60. However, if you do look towards the edges of the video, hopefully you can see the motors. They're kind of blurry, and if you freeze frame it, it's actually blurry. Like It's not just that it's out of focus there. It's only the middle portion of the image is completely focused, so it's it kind of creates a weird um, a fisheye effect which I found a little bit odd and undesirable. And then here's just some of the audio from the camera real quick. So yeah, you don't want to be hearing too much of that. And I did put the little cover over the mic, the little foam cover. It did not help at all. The run cam audio on these, as always, is completely terrible and useless. So do not expect to be using this for any audio. Um, but in terms of the video smoothness, it was pretty nice and real quick here, I will just apply a little bit of color correction and just um, saturation boosts right there. So I think this image looks a little bit better than it did, but overall the stock was just fine. Um, in terms of the bitrate, looking at it full screen, obviously YouTube compression is going to butcher it quite a bit, but full screen on the hard copy looks just fine, no blockiness, and I didn't have any problems here through the trees with the FPV camera. And overall in the HD, it looks pretty nice. Not as good as the GoPro obviously, but pretty on par with the Split V2 um, that I have. And overall I definitely think it's gonna be more than enough, especially if you have this on a little two inch quad or something like that. Um, having this type of HD video, even though it's not the best, having HD video like this on a little two inch quad is definitely gonna be very appreciated by a lot of people. So I'll just let the rest of this finish out with a little bit of music.
All right, so here we are back indoors after the testing of the run cam split mini. You can see this is just the four inch quad that I installed it in because I didn't have any 20 by 20 quads that it would fit besides this one. You can see I had to extend the top plate with some nylon standoffs. This thing is extremely high now. It's five boards high and it makes quite the tower of power. And then the camera just fits right up front with the um, stock micro mounts. However, that ribbon cable can be a little bit of a problem depending, so you have this MMCX connector coming out there, so you need to be a little bit careful with your spacing on this. But the boards itself, I just stacked them in there using the little metal spacers since they are the right length to get the pins to go together. I did put on the little piece that protects the SD card sort of this little metal thing here so it once the SD card slides in it can't pop out which was an issue that I had with the um, Runkin Split V2 the full size version since I didn't use that piece I actually lost an SD card that way so that's definitely a very nice addition um, as you can see in the footage I definitely did have quite a bit of noise in the FPV video and I did just wire this um, straight to the VBAT pads and I did add a little capacitor there but obviously that did not help um, so I would probably recommend powering this from a 5 volt regulated source if you can. You might need to add a separate BEC for that, so that's a little bit annoying. Um, especially on something this small, you might not be able to find a high enough amperage 5 volt source for that. In terms of comparing it to the full size split V2, I definitely do like how this was only one board. Um, even though this is 20 by 20, having two boards kind of makes it a little bit more complicated to mount depending on your frame size, but that's really gonna depend person to person. But in terms of the overall picture quality, I thought they were pretty even between the two. However, as I pointed out, the mini split did kind of seem out of focus on the edges, like out here in the image, which is kind of weird. I did not have that problem at all with the full size um, split, so that might have something to do with the lens they're using. Overall, not terrible, and it's not a deal breaker for a lot of people, especially if you're gonna be using this for a micro quad or maybe something just to get some quick race footage out of. But if you're looking for nicer, sort of slower cinematic footage, I definitely don't think you're going to be wanting that effect. So yeah, that's going to be bring us to the end of the review for the Runcam Mini Split. Overall, still has a few issues, just like the version 2 full size. Just kind of this type of product. Um, it is sensitive to the voltage input and the source that you give it. And it might be a little bit fiddly to fit the camera with the ribbon cable and the two board stack in your build. But other than that, for, for the price, and for what it's intended to do, I think it performs pretty well. The audio, of course, is terrible, but I don't think that's a deal breaker since a lot of times people just mute it and add music anyways. So I definitely do like the overall picture that came out of this. It was pretty decent, as well as I do like the full-size Split V2. I don't suggest them for racing or for any serious cinematic footage, um, but if you're just kind of flying around or you just want to get a little bit of race footage on the track, or say you have a two inch quad that you want to fit something real small into, they definitely do have their place and produce pretty nice footage for what they are. So there'll be a link down below to both of these if you're interested. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.